much, uh, George, for having me in the first place. Um, delighted to present for, uh, for your group. Uh, and um, just a few words first about how I'm going to present this. It's going to be in three parts. First, I'll start with a short keynote, just to introduce a few key concepts, uh, introduce our software and, um, and uh, who we are. And then in the second part, I'll demo the main aspects of the app and why people use this app. Uh, why do we need an iOS device manager in the first place? So I'll give a bit of a demo of uh, some key features of the app. Uh, and I'll spend a, quite a bit of time on the backup because uh, that's one of the key features of uh, iMazing. And uh, then I'll take a few questions again. At the end of each section, I'll take some questions. And part three uh, will be about photos, which uh, we recently completely renovated in iMazing, and uh, we're very proud of the results. And I felt um, it would be it would be you know nice to show you uh, how photos are handled in our app and how they tie very well into uh, the backup as well. So uh, let's get started. I'll start sharing my screen right now and play the keynote presentation. Um, please let me know if there are any issues. So I'm starting the presentation now. Okay, I'll put that down here. So, uh, can you all see everything fine? Is it okay? Yes. Yes, yeah. everything is fine. Okay, take control of your Apple mobile devices with iMazing. So, first, a few words about ourselves. Uh, I'm Gregorio Zanon. I'm the CEO of uh, DigiDNA. DigiDNA is a uh, small Swiss independent uh, software developer. Um, we uh, were founded in 2008, and our original goal was uh, to help Apple users extract music from their iPods. Uh, we had already developed a solution for this and it's really, um, it was in our, our DNA from the very beginning to try to extend Apple's um, ecosystem. So you may know that when the um, iPod was introduced all the way back in 2001, uh, all you could do was sync from a master library to the iPod. And so what happens if you lost your computer? Uh, all the music that was synced on the iPod couldn't be recovered. And um, so we built this quite simple tool um, called Tunate, which would allow you to recover the music from the iPod and to rebuild an iTunes library. And that took off like a wildfire, ex especially in 2008, uh, before it used to be an informal piece of software that was free or available at a very small fee. But in 2008, things really took off with the release of the iPhone. And as the iPhone became an extremely popular uh, product, the, uh, the same problem that plagued the iPod plagued the iPhone as well. Sync is great, it's very convenient, but what happens when you lose the master library? Um, so that's really in our, in our, our core uh, to help Apple users recover data or do things that are not uh, possible in the vanilla uh, Apple ecosystem. Uh, we're all super hardcore Apple fans here, as you see, uh, we have uh, one of the original Macs down there. We have a lot of fun hardware uh, in the office. And um, we're quite a close-knit team with um, great respect for user privacy. And we're uh, very happy of uh, how we've been able to evolve our small niche software into a platform that's a general purpose uh, iOS device manager. Um, so let's take a trip um, down memory lane to this message box. That's what I was telling, uh, telling you about, how the sync paradigm could create some confusion. It couldn't let you retrieve data from, uh, from your iPhone or iPod. And I think everyone knows this message box right here. It tells you, ah, be careful, this iPhone is synced with another library. We're going to erase everything if you sync with that one. So there's also this issue of the sync uh, paradigm being selfish. Uh, you cannot just move a file around. You have to accept that one device is synced to one master library. And what if a friend of yours wants to give you one track uh, from his computer? Well, that won't work, even if it's his own track that he recorded himself. Over the years, Apple uh, relaxed these restrictions somewhat, but it's, it, still, uh, it still was for many, many users uh, a, a major usability problem. Um, so this is Tunate from 2008. Uh, that's our one of our very first piece of commercial software. And that really handles just music uh, for iPhone and, uh, and iPod. So you see all your tracks listed and you can either uh, copy the tracks to a folder on your, on your desktop or to iTunes to rebuild your library. Now, after Tunade in 2008, uh, we 
got hard at work and in 12 years added file transfer photos, app management, backup restore messages, WhatsApp voicemail, cold stream, voice memos, everything you see on this list. And the software today is called iMazing and uh, looks a bit more modern and polished, I hope. Um, so this is iMazing's interface where you see the devices listed in the sidebar here and you can access all your data and perform actions. It's really a, a simple paradigm, choose a device and then it's data sets, actions. We'll see more of that when I'll do the live demo. Um, so who uses iMazing and why? Uh, we have 1 million new users who turn IMA uh, to iMazing every year. I'm including both paid and free users and both Windows and Mac users. It's about a uh, 50 50 split between the Windows and the Mac users. Uh, so that's a, it's a lot of new users. Uh, how come so many people turn to us? Uh, there isn't a typical use case. There are really four broad categories of reasons uh, for why people turn to um, our solution. So the first category is tasks for which Apple has no solution. You just cannot do these things. So the first one is recover music from an iPod or iPhone. That is just not possible with uh, Apple's ecosystem. Um, it's not that it's difficult, it's just not possible at all. Uh, the same stands for synced photos. Uh, you cannot, if you've synced an album locally, uh, you cannot pull the data back. Um, the same is true of uh, doing a local backup to an external drive. Uh, that one is quite interesting because um, iTunes previously and the Finder today can do local backups just fine. And in fact, it uses a small separate uh, program to do the backup called uh, um, Apple Mobile Backup. Yes, and Apple Mobile Backup can take arguments to point to an external drive, but it was never implemented in iTunes and it was never implemented in the Finder. Um, in fact, it turned out that when we first tried to do these backups to an external drive, if we used Apple Mobile Backup, there were actually some bugs in there when pointing it to an external drive. And so over the years, uh, we had to roll out our custom solution to handle the backup. Uh, there will be more about this um, uh, later on during this pr uh, presentation. But that's an extremely popular use case for iMazing because people want a local backup and they don't have the space on their local drive. And, the, and so they just want to back up to an, an external drive. And you can, you can mess around with sim links and that can work, but it's pr pr uh, uh, pretty buggy um, experience and it necessitates uh, some technical knowledge as well. Then you have uh, printing messages. So what happens if uh, you want to print your entire um, chats, all of them to a big PDF? Is that possible in the current ecosystem? It, it, it isn't. Um, that's in the category of what we call data portability. Um, if it's your data, you should be able to do what you want with it. And printing your messages is something that um, exemplifies this quite well. Then you have the app management features. Um, as you may know, since uh, iTunes 12.7, uh, Apple killed off completely all uh, app downloads. You cannot download apps to your computer. You can only manage apps from the iOS device itself, which is fine for most use cases, but some users will have limited bandwidth. And the way we've implemented it, you can download an app once and deploy it to many devices, including with different Apple IDs. So it's very efficient uh, bandwidth wise. And you can also use the feature to hang on to a previous version of an app that you know you like that version, you're scared that the next update is gonna take a feature away. You can keep that version of the app so that you can roll back in case uh, you, you need to. Uh, then we have the last one, fixed corrupted iOS issues. This really depends on the issue, but every single week we help an iOS iPhone or iPad user fix a mortal issue with this device. Um, we do this, we can do this because we're able to try to reinstall to restore the OS without erasing the, the, the device. This doesn't always work, but at least we can try. And uh, we can, are also able to edit the backup. Um, in certain cases, you'll find corrupted files that will end up in the backup. So you can fix these corrupted files in the backup, restore the backup, and the corruption will be solved. This really is on a case-to-case uh, -case basis, but every time we help someone out, we are very proud of uh, having been that useful. Okay, and then the second category of uh, reasons people turn to us is the workflows. Um, syncs is, are, 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 are great, they're simple, but they're also confusing and you hit that sync button and you don't really know what's going to happen. It gets better these days with um, 
um, iCloud based things. But then you have another usability problem, which is, ah, you've deleted something on one device and it's deleted from all the devices. And then you do a local backup and the backup is overwritten. And suddenly uh, one month later, you realize that you've lost a key contact or, uh, or photo. Um, so this thing paradigm can be confusing. And for simple tasks, you just want to add this one file or this one contact to that one phone and nothing else. It's completely overkill. And what we've done in Amazing is try to restore the very simple move this from A to B paradigm, from the phone to the computer, from the computer to the phone, that one file, nothing else. Don't touch, don't touch, don't resync everything. Don't, don't back up, don't just do what I tell you to do. Um, that's a very popular reason for people to turn to, to our software as well. And that goes um, through simple drag and drop workflows, which are very Mac OS. Uh, we try wherever it, we support a feature to enable drag and drop. You just take something, drop it to Amazing, or take it from Amazing, drop it to your desktop. We'll see that in action a bit later on as well. Uh, then uh, quick transfer, I'll cover this later because um, you have to see it in action. It's just a new way of thinking about how to get content on your phone, but I'll demonstrate that. Um, you'll see it's, uh, it's a very nice way of thinking about content first and not about how to transfer uh, content. Um, okay, third reason is data ownership and portability. Um, data cannot be yours if you cannot access it whenever you want to and if you cannot um, make it actionable. If it's just data that you see on a screen, it's, is it really yours? Um, you should be able, since it's your data, to export it to a spreadsheet, to CSV, to text, to Excel, uh, whatever format you wish. And that is something Apple doesn't provide out of the box. And it's something that, um, that we do for, um, for messages, for WhatsApp, for notes, for contacts, calendars, Safari, bookmarks, history, and call history. All these data sets with Amazing, you can, you can extract the data into the format you want. Uh, this has many uses in a professional context. Um, legal context, it can be in order to um, document a client-attorney relationship. It can be to present evidence in court. Um, it can be because of institutional obligations. Uh, we have uh, quite a few clients among uh, US uh, governmental institutions, and sometimes the requirement at the county level, for instance, will be that when devices are changed, they have to be re, uh, reconfigured from scratch, but the data has got to be captured and archived. And so what do they do? They use our type of, of uh, iOS device manager to convert everything to PDF, store that on a hard drive securely, uh, and then they start over from, from scratch. Then uh, we have private use of this, of this uh, data portability uh, concept. It's just simply archiving memories. Um, we see very often the example of uh, couples who are going to get married and they want to print out a cute booklet of their courtship uh, that of course has uh, these days a very strong um, iMessage component. And so with Amazing, they're able to do that, to print a booklet and to offer that um, to their loved ones. Um, okay, now the fourth big reason for people to turn to us is the backups. Um, I don't know if you're aware that the iTunes backup is, is not versioned. There's no versioning, no snapshotting. So every time you back up with iTunes or now with the Finder, it will just overwrite your previous backup. And that is a, is a huge source of misunderstanding. We've seen people being completely um, devastated because they thought they'd made a backup and then they deleted all the data from the phone and then they back up again and, and, and that's it. And it's, it's all gone. And if they, did, if they did that series of action uh, in a short uh, lapse of time, even if they had a time machine backup configured, it's, it's not enough time for time machine to, to have backed up the backup. So uh, that's, we, we, we got to that problem in 2016. And uh, I personally um, handled the, the engine that does the versioning of the backups so that every time you backup, we keep a snapshot of the backup and you can revert to any snapshot. Um, and not only can you revert, you can browse the contents of the backup and extract the data in any format you wish. Um, then our backups are automatic and you get notifications if you haven't backed up and they're local. So you're in control of your data. It's there on your computer uh, and they can be automated by Wi-Fi as well uh, so that you don't even, uh, even need to think about it. Um, okay, of course we fully support backup encryption 
um, as I told you before, we're, we're very Swiss in that respect. Um, we are not interested in your data at all. We don't upload any of it. It's the whole goal of this game is to put our users in control. We don't look at your data, we don't upload it, and we encourage you to enable encryption so that your data is safe and private. So um, that concludes this short keynote. Now I'll just take a few questions uh, to um, clear up some uh, early interrogations before we uh, jump into the live demo. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, sure. Can iMazing work with multiple iPhones? Because I back up my iPhone and my husband's iPhone to my computer. Mm -hmm. uh, any number, as you'll see in the demo, um, you can back up 20 phones if you wish. That is not, uh, not an issue. Okay, great. All right, I don't see any more raised hands, so I guess the floor is yours. Okay, well, I guess we get to the interesting part because talking about something that you haven't seen in action um, isn't the most exciting. So back to iMazing, I'll start the screen share. And there. Oh, I'll try to move down. Can you see iMazing correctly? No, we cannot see it yet. Uh, Sorry. It's all right. There. The share should start. Ready. It's good. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. So this is amazing. I have um, all the devices I've connected to amazing listed here in the sidebar. And um, you can see how it's laid out in uh, three columns, the devices, the data sets, the actions, and on the far right, information about my device. So. I can click here to get extra geeky information about serial number and backup location and all sorts of info. Um, and I also have a battery diagnostics tool right here where I can see the battery health. Uh, so this is the chart here, and this is the battery health. Uh, the battery health is just computed by um, dividing the um, design max charge, max charge by the effective max charge. Well, the other way around, actually. Uh, so it's it's just um, a, a measure of how how well your um, your battery is doing, how much of its original charge it can still retain. Mm, this isn't as useful as it used to be um, for iPhones because Apple introduced um, a tool in iOS 12 to access battery health data, uh, but on the iPad they still have not. So that will be um, your your only chance to have a, an objective look at. Uh, what your battery uh, is, ca is still capable of and if it's time to change it or not. Um, we recommend that below 80% of uh, battery health, you should start thinking about changing the, the, the battery. Now, I'd like to point out that most of these browsing features in iMazing are entirely free. In fact, all the browsing that you're gonna see, as long as you're not exporting data, everything is free. We, it's also uh, one, one of our, um, one of the reasons behind our success, you can do a lot without ever paying. Um, okay, now I'm gonna jump in into the Manage Apps feature, which is one of the exclusive features I talked uh, about before. Um, the features that you just cannot do, oops, sorry, that's the wrong click, Manage Apps is here. Um, so this you just cannot do with iTunes anymore, uh, nor with the Finder. Uh, here is an application library and I can just uh, let's say Apple Clips, I click on the cloud and it's gonna download straight from the App Store. Um, so this is my local library managed by iMazing. If I want to install the app to that device, I'm still in the context of this device. I just click install and that will install the app. It's very easy. Uh, if I want to update apps on my device, I have a check for updates button here. Okay, I have five updates available. I can click update all. And here there's a checkbox, keep downloaded updates. So I can just update the apps from my computer if I wish to do so. And optionally, I can decide to keep all these um, IPA files in my library because you never know, uh, maybe uh, I'll need them later. Um, okay, and then we have some other interesting features that only iMazing does. And these are um, backup app data and restore app data. So we're able to back up just the data from the app, not the, not the app itself, but user data, the preferences, 
So with that feature, you can actually extract the state of a game, for example, or of a file manager app uh, and delete the app and then restore the state of the app later or move the state of the app from one device to another. Uh, that's, it, it's quite handy. Okay, so that covers apps. Wait, uh, sorry, I'm not seeing the, my entire screen because of the Zoom window. Okay, the done button was there. Then next on, uh, we have the workflow I was talking about, uh, how iMazing lets you do very simple things such as just drag, drag and dropping a file to your phone. So nothing better exemplifies this than what we call quick transfer. Uh, quick transfer is available right here. And it just instructs you to drop any file. So I've prepared a few different files. Here's an audio file. Let's see what iMazing does with it. It finds compatible apps on the phone. So first you have the intent, I want this content on the phone, and then iMazing figures out which app is compatible with the content. Here we have the music app, so it will just go into your music library, or you can use it as a ringtone, or you can uh, push it to FileApp. FileApp is our own um, file management app on iOS. Uh, it's quite a legacy product. We haven't maintained it as much as we should have recently um, because Apple released the Files app that kind of made it um, obsolete. But for local file ma 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 management, it's still quite a popular app. And uh, you also have other app, um, similar apps such as Goodreader or Documents, I'm sure you're familiar with. So if I had Goodreader or Documents installed, uh, iMazing would offer uh, also these destinations for any file type. So let's try again. Oh, sorry, same little issue with the screen. Okay. Um, let's try again with, oops, sorry, I'm a tiny bit lost. Quick transfer, yeah. There, with a document, a PDF, iMazing will figure out that this can go into books, into Kindle, and again, into FileApp, because FileApp will accept any files. Then uh, you can even drag and drop the files straight to your device on the right-hand side, and that will work as well. It's even easier. An image will go either into file app again or into the photos app. In that case, it will make a photo album, a synced photo album. Uh, then you can also have a keynote presentation with little surprise that will suggest I copy it in keynote. And an unknown file will only be compatible with file managers such as file app uh, because no other app on my device knows how to handle unknown content. But file app being a file manager, it it can handle any type of content. Um, so this shows you how easy it is to just do these simple tasks. I need that document on my phone now. How do I do it? Uh, and I think we've been very successful uh, with that uh, particular uh, quick transfer feature in delivering a workflow that is really um, extremely streamlined, simple, and puts intent first. Your intent is the content on the phone. It's not about figuring out, should I use iTunes or the Finder or the Photos app on the Mac? How should I get this there or iCloud? Um, it's really about intent and facilitating uh, uh, achieving the, the, the uh, task you, you currently have in mind. Okay, so now we'll move on to um, the third category of uh, features. I mentioned data ownership and portability. Uh, I'll select messages and here, I can browse all my text messages. Um, all attachments are there. Same thing applies as before. I can pick up a picture and drop it on my desktop. That's it, it's done. Um, this picture of me is a bit ridiculous. Apologies for that. I was just showing off a new pants to my wife and uh, sending that over to her, uh, to which she replied that I look like a god. Please don't pay attention, she's way too nice. Um, of course, you can also take attachments. Um, that's a VCF file. You can drag and drop it here, no problem. Then you can select large swaths of data. Let's select everything and export to an uh, Excel file. Uh, you have a few options, include header, include chat session name, export all messages in chat or only selected. Here it won't make a difference. Next, and I pick a destination on my desktop choose and that's it it's done that was uh extremely easy let's open it in uh i think it will open in numbers by default and there you go you have it 
Um, okay. So besides Excel, you also have CSV, TXT, and PDF. PDF is the um, most interesting for uh, the vast majority of users. Um, P in the PDF export window that shows up here, you have a few extra options. Uh, one is uh, add export metadata in footer. This is for legal implications. Uh, it will add some metadata to validate that yes, this uh, page comes from that device. So the device is a uh, serial number, the last modification date of the database. It's geeky data that adds weight uh, in the legal context. If you ever have, if you're ever unlucky enough to have to present um, some of your text messages in court, that will be useful. Uh, we do have a whole series of videos as well on messages. And uh, one of them is specifically about what you should do if you present messages in court. If you're interested, you can just go to our website and uh, you will find the article. Um, okay, so printing works exactly the same as exporting to PDF, because in fact, we export to PDF first and then print. Um, you see that you can very easily configure your margins, the scale, the orientation, and uh, yeah, it's really, really easy. You can also select a bunch of chats and export all of them to split PDFs. That works too. Uh, and you have the option, create a separate file for each chat session here or merge them all in one. So this is one of the mo most popular features and you see how we've really uh, put a ton of efforts to put the user in control. Uh, it's really about achieving what you wish to achieve with your own data. Now, um, I'll move on to backups. Perhaps I'll take a couple of questions before talking about backups because backups is another huge subject. Um, shall we take a couple of questions now? All right, while well, everyone's getting their questions ready, sure. I do have another question. Uh, it's about the um, updates. So I can hold on to every single update of an app or how does that work again? Mm, only if you uh, install the update via iAmazing because mm -hmm. iAmazing cannot access previous versions of the app. Uh, Apple servers will only deliver us the latest right. version so, but if you update with iMazing, uh, the IPA is optionally stored in iMazing's app library. Okay, so if I, let's say I do uh, hold on to all of them, I mm -hmm. go to the latest update and I find that it has removed some of the features that I like. Mm -hmm. Can I then just go back and click on another uh, a previous update yes. without losing anything? Let me quickly show you how that works. Um, there's no better way to demonstrate than just showing you how how it is in the UI. So um, here you can sort by download status. These are all my downloaded apps, and you'll see whenever I have two versions of an app downloaded. Oh, I don't I don't have that particular case now, unfortunately. Um, I have it here. Oh, that's unfortunate. You would see basically this. You would see the same app listed twice mm -hmm. with two different version numbers. And then you just select the, the version number you wish and click uh, install. It's uh, as easy as that. Wonderful. All right, we do have some other questions coming in. Roger, uh, I am going to unmute you and ask your question. And Shida, before you go on, uh, sure. also look, look at the chat uh, feature. I think Ma Marty Dorio has a few questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, Roger, can you unmute yourself, please? He cannot, you have to unmute him. I, I, I tried to unmute him and I'm having a problem with that. Uh, but David, in the meantime, David, go ahead. I've got a question. I want to transfer data from a old IBM uh, uh, laptop to an iMac uh, desktop. Can I do that? Uh, we only manage iOS devices, so if it's data that's you synced from your PC to an iOS device, then you can use iMazing to sync it back. But uh, iMazing is really a tool that focuses on uh, Apple mobile devices. Okay. You can use it on the Windows PC as well, though. I can use it on the Windows PC, but yes. can you me on the Windows PC, can I transfer that data to my uh, desktop, my Apple desktop? Um, it's not the purpose of the tool. You could transfer your PC data to your iPad or iPhone, but not directly from a, a, a PC to a Mac. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Roger, I, I can unmute you. You should be up. Okay. <coughs> Roger, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I, and I don't know how many screens you would have to go back, but <clears throat> you had you were, <clears throat> pardon me, you were showing that you could uh, transfer to a device. Can you transfer to multiple devices simultaneously? And where did you select the device? You had a you had an iPhone. Where did you select that device? What menu did you get that mm -hmm. from? Let me share my screen again so that I can show you. Um, so the uh, second question first, the selection of the device is here on the left hand side. So I see my connected devices and the backups. You see this icon here symbolizes um, the USB connection right here. This means that I'm accessing a backup and uh, I can click on any of these to change the selection. I can ch click here and that will change the context. So um, your second question about pushing files to multiple devices simultaneously, it's also possible with iMazing, but it's part of our um, configurator series of tools that's here in the configurator menu. Uh, but this is available only for system administrators with a separate licensing. It's quite an involved tool. I can just show you briefly, uh, but it's about building uh, blueprints and it's, it's an advanced administrator's tool. Um, in most cases, we don't need to push simult uh, simultaneously to, to multiple devices. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll stop the share again. Yeah. Okay, okay, Lillian, you have a question? Yes, um, hi. Uh, what Hello. you did with messages, can you do that with voicemail or do you have any kind of system to be able to preserve um, voicemail? Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting question. Um, I will show you our voicemail view right now. Voicemail is actually one of the uh, sadder uh, data sets in iMazing because we very often get feedback from uh, our users that they used uh, our voicemail um, extraction feature to recover uh, the last recordings they had of a, of a loved one. And so it's something that's uh, particularly, uh, uh, yeah, a particular emotional impact to us. Um, okay, so you see I've selected my phone up here, then phone voicemail. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all the voicemail I have available on the phone and same as, um, as with anywhere else, I can just select the voicemail and drag and drop to my desktop. It's uh, as simple as that. Uh, note that there is a tiny um, caveat. Some forms of older voicemail services where the voicemail is handled by the phone carrier uh, are not accessible to iMazing because your voicemail recording will actually be with the carrier and not on the phone itself. Uh, it's uh, Apple calls the more modern way of handling voicemail uh, visual voicemail. It's very counterintuitive, uh, but you should verify first that you do have visual voicemail. Uh, it's very easy to verify if you just plug your phone to uh, iMazing and uh, click on voicemail, wait until it loads, and if it has nothing, probably uh, you don't have visual mo uh, voicemail, unfortunately. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Michael, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, great. I have a question regarding um, apps that I've paid for that are uh, located on one of my iOS devices, and I want to transfer it over to another app, um, another uh, device that's on a different um, Apple ID, how do I do that? Mm, that will be an issue. Uh, you can try. Uh, the first thing you need to do is just plug it to Amazing, see if you can download the app in question. Is it an app that's still on the App Store or it's, it's not anymore? Uh, well, it's, it's available on the App Store, but it's already okay. downloaded to my iOS device. Yeah, so you, you cannot migrate an app from one Apple ID to another. But what you can do is install an app which belongs to your first Apple ID onto a device that's signed in with the second. So it is possible with Amazing to do that kind of thing. You will download the app with uh, Apple ID A, which is the one you purchased it with. And then on the second phone, 
uh, you can push the app to the second phone. That works, but the, the second phone will, when you open the app, prompt you to uh, sign in to the to Apple ID A, uh, even if you're signed into Apple ID B on the second phone. Do you see what I mean? Or yeah, I do. And then regards to that as well. So let's say my wife has her phone on her Apple ID and I have it on mine, but yet I've set it up so that both of us can be sharing on the Apple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With so. How does it work then? Family sharing is a bit tougher to handle uh, for iMazing. We wouldn't advise you to do to use iMazing for this. If you have family sharing, I think it works just fine as is. Um, if you don't have some severe constraints with um, with bandwidth, I would advise you just to download uh, in in both places uh, using family sharing on on each device separately, straight from the App Store. But then I'd have to pay for it a second time. Is that right? Not if you use family sharing. Okay, got it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. If the goal is to is to make an app available to family members, uh, then iMazing is not your solution. Uh, it, fa Apple has family sharing for this, and it works very well. So uh, I, I I wouldn't advise um, users to start to yeah to to uh, mess around with uh, Apple IDs and put Apple. Uh, apps belonging to various Apple IDs all on one device, it's going to be a huge mess. Much better to use uh, what Apple uh, offers, uh, and they offer that for free as well. So there's no reason not to take advantage of a family sharing. OK, great. And I have a second question, if I could, please. Okay. Uh, no. OK. That, no. Marty, unmute your phone. Uh, um, unmute your mic, and please ask your question. Um, uh, I have two, two questions. Uh, you, you mentioned that when you, when you move an a uh, file, if there's no app on the iPhone, that it goes to your file manager. For for us, does it go to the Apple's file manager? You know, Unfortunately, files? Apple did something very strange there, which is why uh, third-party file managers are still popular. Uh, Apple did not open the files app to local file sharing. So oh. you cannot push a file to the files app um, in this in in this manner, I know it seems uh, very counterintuitive, but uh, that's how they they handle it. So, they are, so yeah. So recently, I I exported a bunch of messages because I wanted to put them into day one, mm -hmm. and when I did that, I selected them all, uh, moved them, but the photos didn't move. I had to move the photos separately. Is that the way it's mm -hmm. supposed to operate? So do you mean you used iMazing to move messages or what did you use? Yeah, uh, iMazing, yeah. Ah, so uh, you would have to export to PDF first. If you just drag and drop by default, it won't make a PDF. You will, you will get text and uh, images separately. Um, if you, you build a PDF of your, of your messages and then you can uh, import that in day one, no problem. Okay. Yeah, Thank because you. the uh, PDF is a, is a good format for uh, um, paginating both images and text content. Yeah. Okay, Gr Gregorio, would you like to ask, answer more questions or would you like to continue with your presentation? Uh, what time is it? It's already 6.12. Um, maybe I'll, I'll uh, just move on to backups um, and I'll shorten the photos bit a little bit and take some more questions. All right, thank you. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen again. And um, we're going to move on to a small demo where I'm going to connect a new device that iMazing doesn't know about. Uh, it's an iPod Touch we use for testing. Uh, just to show you what happens when you connect a new device to our software. So as soon as uh, iMazing picks it up, it will instruct us as to what to do. So it says iPod Touch. Um, and the uh, and mark demo is locked. Please enter your passcode. This is called pairing. Uh, for security reasons, you cannot com have an iOS device communicate with a computer without unlocking it first and then hitting trust. There's a trust prompt on the device and then entering the passcode a second time. Uh, Apple has increased security tremendously um, in the past few years to prevent all kinds of intrusions um, may be from, from people inside your own uh, family circle or from uh, thieves who could then go on and, uh, and uh, perform identity thefts. Um, so 
it's now extremely secure and you do need to go through uh, this uh, pairing stage. Once you've gone through the pairing stage, the Mac and the iPhone or the iPad can communicate without uh, user interaction. Except if you reboot the device, you'll need to unlock it at least once. But iMazing will always tell you if you need to actually touch the device uh, for it to um, interact with it. So then we take also great care of trying to explain to you what's happening and why you should back up or not. Uh, so this screen is, uh, we call it the initial backup screen. Um, we tell you that you should make an initial backup. And not only because it's safe to have a backup, but also because quite a lot of data types are only available via a backup. You just can't get the data directly from the phone. It's not possible. Um, it will be possible if you were to jailbreak the phone, but we don't. Uh, deal with jailbreaks at all. We use only legitimate services. We don't hack or crack the device. Um, so here it says that messages, WhatsApp, uh, phone, Safari, calendars, contacts, and notes are data types that require a backup in order to be displayed uh, by iMazing. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the camera roll, photo library, music, ringtones, apps, um, and file system and, and voice memos are available directly without a backup. So knowing this, you can make your decision. And if you click on backup now, it doesn't just launch a backup. It will present you with the screen that lets you configure um, how you want the backup to happen. In this case, I've already enabled encryption on this device. If I hadn't enabled encryption, it would be red here. So that's our way of telling you mm, something's not right. Do you really want all your private data stored on your Mac without any form of encryption? Um, and so a few words about backup encryption. This is done by iOS itself. We do not encrypt the files. Uh, we do not even build the, uh, the backup. The backup is a very complex process that happens iOS side on the device. Um, if you think about it for two minutes, how do you get an image of a device that is performing changes all the time? It's syncing with iCloud, it's receiving phone calls, it's, it's doing stuff in the background, analyzing databases. How do you get the, a coherent state um, for a device? Android doesn't have backups because it doesn't have what Apple did, which is a proper backup service that runs device side. And it's really funny if you look at the device logs, it's very interesting, you launch the backup and it's like you know, general, uh, general panic. All the services talk to each other on iOS. Everyone says, hey guys, we're gonna back up. Uh, you stop doing what you're doing and uh, let's uh, make sure that we all have a, co a coherent state so that we can uh, produce a coherent Im uh, image of, our, uh, of the file system that will be restorable. Um, so we're not in control of that. We're in control of receiving the backup, storing it in the location of your choice, and then applying uh, what we call our versioning paths where we track changes from one backup to the next to let you revert to a previous backup. That's what we do. But the backup itself, that's iOS, not us. And it could not be us. There's no way to get these messages um, or these notes if it's not uh, through the backup. So we push you to um, encrypt the backup. We um, ask if you'd like to automate backups. You have lots of options here. Uh, backup schedule daily, time frame. Uh, let's back up only uh, from one o'clock in the morning to 10 a.m. Um, and back up only if my battery is over 50%. Save, that's my automatic backups uh, configured. Then you can enable Wi-Fi connection with the device. That's enabled. If you don't enable this, then iMazing will only be able to communicate with your device when it's connected via USB. Um, we have the backup archiving options here. Uh, enable backup archiving. This means yes, track changes from one backup to another. Um, automatically clean archive backups. If you don't enable this, your backups will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So we suggest that you enable it and by default, it's one month of backups uh, minimum, but you can you know, move that to two months or one year of backups that will be uh, uh, safeguarded. Um, so these are the backup archiving options. You have the backup location. Uh, you choose your backup location. You can add a location here. Um, and yeah, that's it for the uh, backup options. We have, we have more, but I think it's way enough for now. And then you just hit backup and let iMazing work. Um, because this is a test device, ah, you see the, 
uh, what we call the operations window here, um, which pops up whenever an operation runs in the background to let you know that something is happening. Uh, we don't like to have stuff happening in the background that reports no progress. So you have this um, um, operation window here. And the backup is extremely quick here. A normal backup would, would take half an hour or so uh, for the first full backup. This is extremely quick because the device is a test device that's more or less empty. Now, once you do have a backup, here I'm not in the correct context, yes. You will see the backup displayed here. Here I just made a single backup, so this window is not very interested. Uh, interesting. But if I select my own device, you'll see that I have all these backup versions I can roll back to, all the way back to the 20th of May, uh, of April, sorry. Uh, the date format here is European, so this is the 20th of April. Uh, and notice that this is exactly one month um, earlier than today, and I've uh, selected, well, instructed iMazing to keep one month of backups, which uh, it re re respected. And now what happens if I double click any of these versions, let's go to the 20th of April. You'll see that my device is grayed out now here and I'm in backup browsing mode. Whatever I do when I'm in backup browsing mode, I will see the content of the phone as it was in that backup. Let's see what happens with photos. And this is what we're personally very excited about, the, the way that there's a symbiosis between the backup and the access to data, the data portability. Uh, a backup is not just a dead piece of data. It's something that you can actually browse. This is my photo library from the backup. It's right here. I can uh, select any photo, extract it to my desktop. This is a screenshot I had shared of a water bear. Uh, that's very nice. Um, and in the photos view, you have a ton of metadata available. If you look at the sidebar here, uh, we tell you the name of the file, where, where it was taken. You have a location here. You have the exposure, lots of uh, geeky information for uh, professional photographers to, uh, to dig through. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna go back into device browsing mode. You notice there's a little green light here saying this is what I've selected. I go back to the top and I go back to my live device. And now it reloads, uh, it will reload the photos from the device. Ah, and it's loading via Wi Fi. Notice that there's a Wi Fi connection icon here. Since I've enabled Wi Fi connection and the device is within range, I don't even need to connect it via USB. It will pull the photos straight from the device. So let's just wait a few seconds. It's a tiny bit longer to load the photo library by Wi-Fi, but it's, it's quite reasonable and uh, we feel it's perfectly usable. Uh, you will see this. So this is the new photos view I was uh, telling you about that we completely rebuilt. What is extremely different from what you would expect, this is not the Photos app. The data is not on your computer. Uh, the data is on the phone and we stream it directly from the phone. So I can go all the way back, see my entire photo library, but it's not on the computer. It's just on the phone. Um, and I can double click anything and drag and drop to the desktop. As always, I can use the scrubber here to move in my library. Um, here it tells me that it's an HDR picture and it just, it just works extremely well. Um, it's very fast and very easy. Uh, these are fossils that uh, I've acquired recently. I'm very fond of them, even if they look like uh, two little creeps, but um, they are quite extraordinary. Um, okay, there is also a, uh, a full screen mode that's very handy. If you double click, in the detail view, you'll enter full screen mode and you can just browse your phone's library in full screen without even pushing any data to the computer. This all stays on the phone. Uh, you can notice as well that th at the top of the detail view here, you have a section called assets. These are the different assets that are available for a single picture. This is a live photo, so you have a movie and a 
uh, an image. And you can pull any of these and drag them to your desktop as well. Now, to go back to this idea of assets, you'll notice that recently, especially with the iPhone 12 Pro, you can get extremely large uh, assets for just a single photo. So I've enabled uh, the wide angle smart capture uh, on my iPhone. This is just a single live photo I snapped. And look at this, it actually took four photos, all of them available to iMazing. So the original live photo is a movie file, 3.6 megabytes. The picture is an HEIC file, 1.2. But then it also took an ultra wide version of that photo, just in case I would want to um, recrop the image later on to reframe it. And so the ultra wide assets of the movie file is 4.2 megabytes and the ultra wide um, HEIC file is 2.4. So that is adding seven megabytes just for a single photo. And iMazing will make you aware of these, uh, of these small things, uh, which we find is perfectly uh, well integrated in our philosophy of, of um, you know, giving our users the tools not only to act upon the data, but to become aware of, of what is what and what really happens when you take a single picture. Um, Okay, I think that's it for the photos and it tied in with, uh, with the backup as well. Uh, I showed you how you could go back in time via the backups window and browse not only photos, but messages or WhatsApp data of, uh, of, a, of a past snapshot of your phone. Um, I would like to point out that not everything is backed up. Here also, we cannot decide what's backed up and what's not. Um, Typically, data that is synced either locally uh, from a master library, like music you would sync from your computer with iTunes or the Finder, or uh, photos you would sync also locally, will not be included in the backup. And uh, um, Apple did this in order to avoid duplicate data on the phone, because would it, uh, sorry, not on the phone, on the computer. It would not make sense to have uh, 20 gigs of music on your Mac and then push it to the phone and then back up the phone and these 20 gigs of music would be in the backup and in the computer's library, it would not make, make much sense. So Apple's paradigm here is if content is synced, uh, especially for media libraries, it's not backed up. Um, again, that's music, well, synced music and synced uh, photos mainly and synced books as well. So you have to be aware of this when you uh, use amazing that. We don't back up everything because the backup just doesn't include everything. It's how iOS works. Um, I think that's about it. Again, if you do use iMazing, please enable encryption for your backups. Um, Apple will also not back up sensitive data if encryption is not enabled. So your health data is not backed up if you don't enable uh, backup encryption. And your keychain isn't backed up either. Um, encryption is not just uh, just to be safe, it's also to get as much data as you as you can in that backup. Um, I think that's it for me right now. I'd like to thank you for listening and look forward to you answering your questions. Uh, I hope they'll, and I'm sure there'll be quite a few. Okay. All right. Let's start with Alan and Barbara. You have a question. Yes. Um, I, I'm Did you a little. Unmute? Did you unmute? I, yeah, she unmuted me. Okay. Um, so I'm a little confused about interacting between iOS devices and OS devices. Uh, my wife and I each have an iPhone uh, and we have two different, and we, and we have uh, an old iMac and a weekly functioning MacBook Pro. And they all have different things on them. And uh, I'm a little confused how I manipulate things between all of these devices, or is your program only work by manipulating things between iOS devices? So um, our software runs on the desktop computers. It must be installed on Mac OS, so that's on, on a MacBook Pro or on an iMac. Uh, and then you connect the iOS devices to the MacBook Pro or the iMac. Okay. So I'm um, again, I, 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 I would dead, would beat a dead horse, but I'm confused how I would transfer data from my phone to my iMac, for example. So you would install iMazing, the software on the iMac, and then you would, um, you would connect the phone via USB to the iMac, 
launch our software and then you will see the content of uh, your iPhone displayed on your Mac and you'll be able to drag out of the phone and onto your desktop the content you wish to transfer. Only when I have the phone and the iMac USB connected, I can't do that through Wi-Fi? You can, uh, but the first connection needs to happen via USB uh, for security reasons. Once you've connected by USB, you can pull the pull the plug and do it via Wi-Fi. Sure. Wi-Fi is slower, of course, though. Yeah, so if course. you have large amounts of data to transfer, um, USB is faster. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Jim Cutler, you're next. My wife managed to get two versions of one of her favorite puzzles on her older iPad. And when she got her newer iPad, and I used Apple's facilities to copy the contents, move the contents. I only got one copy of that puzzle. They are different sizes according to iMazing. I did. I looked at that while you were talking about it. Um, mm -hmm. It's 12.30. Will, will iMazing let me re restore both of those or copy both of those to her so new iMazing? It's, uh, when you say a, a, a puzzle, it's a puzzle app? Yes. You mean, or? Um, it depends if the app, in some cases, the app will just not be on the app store anymore or will be a 32 bit app that's not compatible with newer iOS versions. So we would have to evaluate what is the reason why did the app not uh, become available on the new device. Um, if it's an old app, there are chances that it just isn't compatible. Uh, but I would have to know the name of both apps and, uh, and to have a look. Well, they have the same name. Okay, and that the, could be, the, yeah. And I don't know if I can change the name on it or not. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing you, you, you can do is write to us with, um, with a screenshot or, or, or two at um, imazing.com slash support. Uh, mm -hmm. You write to us with a couple screenshots so that we can see the apps displayed in iMazing's library and figure out um, on the phone or in iMazing's library and figure out uh, how we can help. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. This is, I've, I've, had, I've had iMazing for a while, but really haven't had time to get involved with it. Mm -hmm. So your presentation has been just what I needed. Okay, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I concur. Okay, Michael Slider, you're next. Yeah, question for you. I've been under the impression that if I back up uh, a, an iOS device to the iCloud and then also back it up to my hard drive, that the hard drive app has got um, more information on it that the uh, iCloud doesn't. And then I wanted to compare that to mm -hmm. what would happen if I backed it up on iAmazing. So um, iAmazing Backup and Finder or iTunes Backups are the same, except for the versioning. iCloud Backup is slightly different um, because Apple will remove from the iCloud Backup data that is synced via iCloud. So you have these two different mechanisms. Let's say you enable iCloud Photo Library. Um, the photos are stored in iCloud and are synced automatically to all your connected devices, uh, the, the devices which are logged in to your Apple ID. And so why would you include the photo library again in the iCloud backup? It's, it, it's not needed. Uh, for that reason, the iCloud backup trims off all the types of data which are already synced um, via cloud services. And then what about the hard drive? Uh, there you get all the data that's actually on the phone. Um, on the hard drive, you just, you just get everything. With some exceptions, uh, it's quite complicated, but uh, if you enable, for example, uh, the optimized storage option of, uh, of uh, your photo library on the phone, I don't know if you're familiar with this option, uh, if you enable iCloud photo library and then you enable optimized storage, basically you're, you're, uh, you're instructing iOS to remove photos as, as you stop looking at them. If you don't look at a photo and iOS needs space, it will feel free to just ditch it and keep it in the cloud only. But the result of that is if you're in the plane and suddenly you pick up your phone and you want to see that photo, it, it will only be available as a thumbnail, uh, not as a high resolution asset. Of course, since the photo is not on the phone, Amazing won't back it up or iTunes won't back it up. It will just back up the, th the, the thumbnail. 
So this is the case for photos, and it can be the case as well for uh, attachments in messages and in notes. Uh, in general, if content is in iCloud, iOS may have the right to just uh, ditch it from the device to make space. And in that case, it's not always available to iMazing. But if it's in iCloud, it's available to you in iCloud. You just have to log into iCloud.com and you can download the photo from there or uh, uh, yes, that would be the ideal solution. But if you restore the, if you to restore an iOS device from uh, iAmazing versus the, the hard drive, is there a difference? What do you mean by the hard drive? You, uh, you mean the Finder? Uh, well, if I was, if I back up using the Finder. Yes. Okay. okay so um, it's, it's it's exactly um, um, equivalent. It's the same. The backup process is the same, and the restore process is the same. Okay. We ha we just have this versioning, uh, this backup history I showed you a bit earlier, where you can roll back to previous versions. We have this and the ability to display the content and export it. Um, by the way, iMazing can also display and export uh, the content from a backup made with iTunes or the Finder. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Carol, you're next. Um, Carol, unmute yourself and ask Thank your so. question. Okay, there it is. Um, I went looking for this app in the App Store and couldn't find it. So I figure it's not there. And of course, before this, I didn't even realize it was not iOS, it's only OS from my perspective. So how do we get it? And are there tiers of paying or tell us about that, please? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Amazing is a Mac OS app. Um, it's not on the Mac OS App Store, on the Mac App Store, for uh, very simple reasons. Um, Mac OS apps, uh, apps are sandboxed when they are available on the App Store. They have to obey certain rules that they shouldn't touch files which don't belong to them. So, apps which are u u utilities and typically need to access more of your file system often never make it to the App Store. This is the case for Parallels, for instance. Uh, these type of utilities and then we also have this uh, troublesome business of uh, what's called linking private apis in order to do what we do we link with uh, the frameworks apple reserves to itself uh, in order to communicate with ios devices so many software will do uh, similar things but that will get you out of the App Store immediately. You cannot be on the App Store if you link private uh, frameworks. You can still get a, an Apple developer certificate. So there's some hypocrisy there. We are certified developers. The app is notarized. Um, it's perfectly fine. And, but we cannot be on the App Store. The same goes for Parallels, for VMware, for um, Clean My Mac until very recently, but they had to uh, butcher their app you know, to pieces in order to uh, have it accepted on the App Store. So the easiest way to get iMazing is just to open Safari uh, on your Mac and go to iMazing.com and you have a download link uh, right there. And do I have to pay for it? If, like if I want to export my chat, that sounds like what you said one has to yes. pay for. So uh, browsing is free and then if you ex export data, we ask uh, that you license the app. And the price is $45 for a single license, uh, and then 50 for a universal, which is valid for two computers. And uh, the family is valid for, for five computers and it's $70. Uh, we do have a special discounted uh, store for your group that will be um, online until the end of the month, I believe. Uh, I think if you receive the invitation by email, there's a special link and you get a 50% discount on uh, the three license types. And upgrades, what about that? How do upgrades work? So we've been <laughs> extremely nice about these um, for many years. Our last paid upgrade was in uh, 2016. And uh, existing users uh, were offered a 65% discount. So we do see people who paid $14 in 2016 and who have been using iMazing every day. Some of them lawyers for professional business for four years enjoying many many updates uh so yes we're not we're not very aggressive with those but we will soon change our business model and have a model where you will pay per ios device but for the lifetime of the device so you say okay i get amazing from my phone and that's much cheaper 
but and i know that i get all the updates for free forever as long as i have that phone that phone will be able to connect to any version of amazing forever uh, and that's a way we think will you know make users stop to worry about updates and you get amazing a bit like you would get apple care um and it, it will be very cheap per device when you change device you pay a little extra it will be close to ten dollars a bit less pro probably and you know that that phone can be managed with amazing forever until it dies or you sell it thank you okay yeah. i'd like to clarify that i'd like to clarify that so if i buy amazing now and then want mm -hmm. Uh, to update to an iPhone 11 next month. So there'll be a little bit of a, like a, you say, $10 upcharge in order to do that? Not for now. Uh, for now, our current model, which will be honored all the way until iMazing 3 in 2021 Q2 probably. So for another whole year at least, uh, and probably even a bit more, we're quite late on version three. Our current model is you pay once and you get all uh, the 2.x updates. But in the future, in iMazing 3, we'd like to, 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 to change this because every time we issue a, a major update, even as infrequently as we have, uh, one update in four years is really not a lot. Uh, it's, it, it really creates a lot of, fr of frustration. And we feel that if we tie the purchase to the iOS device instead of to the computer and then say, okay, updates will never be paid again, but you license a device to be used with iMazing. Uh, that is uh, the next model we have in mind. So that it will not be a subscription, but you will pay propo um, in proportion to how many devices you manage. Uh, and so ITs who have 100 iPhones will pay a bit more than if you're just managing your one iPhone and one iPad. Okay. All and right, I feel Mitch. that's quite fair. All right, thank you. All right, Mitch, please unmute your mic and ask your question. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, so I just want to understand this. I, I, I think you clarified it, but maybe I was sleeping. Um, when I do a backup on iMazing, it's the same as doing a backup on my, an encrypted backup on my computer in Finder. All the, mm -hmm. same, all the same data is being backed up. And the big difference is, is that, um, and I'm amazing. You keep all the backups uh, forever. Mm -hmm. right. Not forever, uh, depending on how you've uh, configured. How you set it up. Yeah, you brought that yeah. chart up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is, so that's so, the big difference. Mm -hmm. The two main differences, well, three. One, you control um, where the backup goes. So if you want it to go to an external drive, that can happen. Uh, two, the versioning, you control how much history a backup maintains. And three, the browsing, you can actually browse the content and not just have a, a folder containing, uh, containing files with strange names. And once I do the initial backup with the um, uh, connection to the computer, then I can set it up so that at night it's backing up over mm -hmm. my Wi-Fi just, like, just, just like it's backing up to the cloud. Absolutely. You need the phone and the computer to be in the same, uh, well, connected to the same Wi-Fi net network. Uh, but if that's home, that's totally fine. Um, you set up Amazing to backup daily and you'll just get a small notification every time it backs up saying backup successful and that's done. And, uh, and so I, if I have one computer, I need a single license, but then I can have multiple iOS devices, even like my wife's, I can have hers, mm -hmm. I can have my iPad and so on. So for now, the license does not count at all the number of iOS devices until iMazing 3, late 2021. You, what I said about counting devices is, is the future. For now, one license is one computer and any number of iOS devices can connect to the computer. We don't, we don't count. Thank you. You're Greg, welcome. Greg, I have a question. This is Eckhart. Uh, the, uh, our audience would like to know what is the code for the discount? Um, so wait a second. I have to no, no. It's, it's, it's in the mail. Is it in the it's mail? It's on the announcement. It's on. Yes. The, uh, all the announcements I sent out of the meeting, uh, the code was on every single one of them. So we can repost the code here as well. That's not a problem at all. Uh, but I think in the um, announcement, you actually had a link, which is even handier than an 
an actual code. But I think it was simply imazing dash uh, um, nmug, most probably. One, one second, I'll have it here. Yes, um, I'll try to post that in the chat. Chat, yes. The coupon is, and you can also use the link, direct link would be with the parameter. Yes, that's the direct link. All right, thank the you. The link is much easier to use because you won't need to enter the coupon manually. Uh, I would suggest you just click on the link. Uh, thank you. Great. Do you have time for one more question? Of course. Alan and Barbara, please unmute your mic and ask your question. Okay, uh, oh, okay. wait, I didn't see it. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're... Uh, You're I can on, hear you. you. We can hear you, Alan. Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> Okay, Eckert, can you unmute Alan and Barbara? Okay, I'm unmuted. Oh, okay, I just let me make a brief comment. I mute everyone at the beginning of the meeting and I deactivate the possibility to unmute th that you can unmute yourself. So, uh, Shida, I do, I do that also for security reasons. So, I, I have, I, but I can unmute everyone personally and I'm doing that. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm unmuted you. now, so I guess everybody can hear me, particularly the presenter. Right. Uh, I, okay. I, again, I'm all confused about about backup. Uh, I I purchase is my understanding is I purchase iMazing for my iMac, and then I can connect uh, my right. iOS devices to that purchase that I made through an OS device. Is that part correct so far? Correct. You do not need to purchase in order to back up, by the way. You can just download iMazing and start backing up. Okay, but whatever it is, I download it to, uh, an, uh, to an OS device, my iMac. Yes, to, okay. to, to, to the Mac, yes. Okay, now my iMac is an old iMac and it only mm -hmm. has High Sierra. Does your uh, iMazing work with High Sierra? We're compatible all the way back to um, 10.9, actually. So okay. High Sierra will do fine. Okay, fine. Now I have it on my on my iMac, and uh, and I want to back up a very very large collection of photos in mm. my photos. I mean, it's like thousands of them. Mm. So can I back up for thousands of pictures onto your iMazing uh, backup area? Uh, for the same seventy dollars discounted by half to thirty five, so for thirty five dollars on your machine, I can back up thousands and thousands of, of photos. Oh uh, sure, we don't count the, the 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 number of files and photos that you that you 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 uh, back up once the software is in your hands. It's it's yours, and you do what you please with it. Okay, so now for a whole thirty five dollars, I can back for up twenty. What? 20 will be enough. 20 or whatever it is, okay. Uh, for, for that <laughs> modest amount of money, I can back up thousands and thousands of photos. I pay Apple $10 a month for two terabytes of storage for mm -hmm. that very same reason. So are you telling me that once I buy your software and I back up all these photos, I can, uh -huh. I see I the can confusion. undo um, that $10 a month that I pay Apple? We don't store your data. So you would have to store your data on your own hard drive. Uh, so you pay Apple these $10 a month to have cloud storage so that they take care of the uh, integrity of your, of your files. Amazing only offers you the, the backup and the transfer, but we don't store your data at all. So it would be on your own computer or on a hard drive you purchase separately. But if what you're looking for is the peace of mind of the cloud, then that's not what we're offering. So therefore, you don't actually back it up on some computer that you own. You have the facility for backing it up on my high drive. Well, yes, I can back it absolutely. up on my high drive myself. 
Sure, absolutely. But you cannot have uh, versioning and you cannot access the same number of assets. Of course, you can just use the finder and that will back up your photos for sure. Got it. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you for your time with me alone. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. I learned a lot as well, so I will be going out and purchasing. Uh, thank you very much for creating this. This is wonderful. Yes, we've been at it for many years and uh, hopefully uh, for many years to come. Um, well, thank you very much to everyone again for having me. And uh, if you have any questions, don't forget, you can always write to uh, our support team. We reply uh, pretty quickly. And if the level one support can't help, uh, it's escalated to my colleague, Terry, who's sitting right here, and eventually all the way to me if, um, if the problem doesn't find a solution uh, uh, at level one or, or two. So I'm actually reading user feedback still daily. Uh, so you're not just writing to, to a um, chat bot. Uh, and please take, uh, take advantage of that. Wonderful. Thank you. Good to know. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. You very much. So, Thank you.